So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rock Titan. I'm Scotty J. And man, we've got an awesome guest with us right now. Uh, you recognize him, not just because of his greatness and his legend, but because he's been on. Yeah, he's been on Rock Titan before. We were backstage in Philadelphia, and at that time, we were talking pounding the pavement. But now they got a brand new album coming out called Impact is Imminent. But the funny thing about Impact is Imminent, these guys have been making an impact on heavy metal for decades. Mr. Dips Cudlow, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, well, like we were just saying a little bit before we uh, formally kick things off here, man, I had so much time or so much fun with you and Rob last time we got to catch up, man. And uh, of course, I had the privilege of seeing and hearing you guys live. But uh, I guess in a nutshell, you've been very busy over the last few years. We haven't been back. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been to philly right and i think it's going to be another long while before we're back <laughs> well okay. in philly yeah but i was looking at your june tour schedule because ladies and gentlemen anvil has a huge u.s tour coming up starting in june and you guys will be out in millersville at very least and millersville right. isn't all that far from me well that's good yeah it came, yeah we did there's places that we kind of went you know what stay away and then we'll work around them. Right on. Right on. Do you do better on the outskirts or you, for whatever, whatever. It's just <laughs> well, places yeah, you, you know where they're, they're more, um, it's just more fertile. Let's just put it that way. Fertile. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? You say yeah, fertile. What I, what I mean by that, there's going to be more people there. <laughs> okay. Because that makes me think of Legal at Last, you know, your last album that you had, which, you know, we transversed because, you know, obviously the last time you and I were catching up with Rob, we were talking all things, you know, pounding the pavement, you know, and right. now, and now May 20th, everybody, we've got Impact is Imminent and it is awesome. And I can tell, Lips, I can tell that you were very productive during this pandemic, because oh, like, you could have made this a double. I, this I, just, yeah, I did. I didn't finish there. You're, you only hear half of it. Okay. And the other half is sitting in my computer right here. The other half. I'm finished for the next one. I got number 20 in the bag. Wow. I just, I gotta wait. I, the time has to go. You know, you don't put out everything at once. I wrote two albums worth. Well, I was just going to say, Impact is Imminent. That's like, that's two albums worth right there by a lot of people's standards. Wait, you got 14 tracks on there? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's uh, like two long. Are, two are, are the same track, but done differently. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Do you know that? What's that now? Do you know that? Did you realize that? I'm just asking you. I might have missed it. I was all caught up in your, of course, the, the one uh, official music video that you have out there right now. And then most recently you put out Take a Lesson. I know that that's the most recent single that you have out there right now. Your okay, second but you single. Haven't, have you haven't heard the whole album. I have heard the whole album and now I'm trying okay. to think. So do you know what Gomez is? Yes. And do you know what Teabag is? Yes. Do you realize that they're the same song? Well, that just shows the state of mind that I was in at the time, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, man. That's two funny, different man. Versions. Two different versions. All right. I got lips calling me out here, people. As I would expect any seasoned musician to do. All right. You no, know, no, the whole point was, the whole point was, is that, that, that I'm having a great fucking time. And at the expense of everybody who is, everybody's innocence. And I'm having a great time with it. As you I, I, should. I, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. Let me explain. I said, I said when we put the sequence, I, like I, I go, I'm really fanatical about sequence. Okay. Sure. So I put, I put Gomez at the end of the album, but I also included uh, Teabag and I put it earlier. Now without Teabag there, you don't get the full impact of what, of what Gomez is at least. I didn't think that people would separate them to the point where they would actually think that it's not the same song, but they, it's only till I point it out. And then they go, 
oh my God. And that is precisely why I my decision to use both versions was the right one to do. When I went in to write this album and when we went in to record the album, the intention was to do a swing style song okay. that 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 would was sort of the same kind of style that was on Juggernaut of Justice that we did we did use horns. Okay. On the Juggernaut of Justice album, we used horns on the song called Swing Thing. In this particular case, my whole idea was let's leave this alone, no horns. And Rob was on this thing. We got to put horns. And I'm going, because we love big band. And I'm going, okay, let's just see what happens. Anyway, we named the first one T-Bag. We wanted it to be as three-piece as possible. Okay, so we do T-Bag. Now, look, this T-Bag is Sasha Gervasi, the guy who made the movie. It's his nickname, right? I don't know if so I'd want that tea bag, but that's aside thing. from the point. Yeah, okay. So we called the first one tea bag. So the producers hear the fucking song and they're going, You gotta get you gotta get horns. So Martin, the producer, goes, Listen, I'm I've got a horn section, guys. They're willing to do it. Lips, I'll make you a deal. If you don't like it, you don't pay for it. What's that? How do you what do you think of that? And I go, Well, fuck, okay, here we go. So they bring the fucking thing back as we're mixing the album. And I hear this and I almost shit my fucking pants. I could not fucking believe my ears. I couldn't fucking believe it. I'm going, I, it's unbelievable. Fuck. Okay. We're using both. And they went, what? I go, yeah, we're using both. And they go, well, what do you mean? I go, well, what? because we got to demonstrate what, what the difference is between just doing rock and then adding horns and see what it does to the song. All we're doing is daddy horns. You can't even tell it's the same song. Fuck. It's unbelievable. And, it, and it, when you do realize it's the same song, you, you realize how fucking cool that is. And you realize how the all the music is connected. All music is connected. You've got to realize that there's only two kinds of music in this world. The music we like and the music we don't like. Everything else, if you can call it genre, genre, whatever you want. Well, you can pigeonhole, pigeonhole everything you want and try to define it in every fucking way you possibly can. Go ahead. But the bottom line is, when it really comes down to, do I like it or don't I? Okay, so in this particular case, it's music. And it just shows the musicality of both Anvil and what you can do with music what the capabilities we have of in music and to what we could what is feasible and plausible and 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 astronomical to to achieve that's what you're looking for so the, you know when, when i heard that I, I went okay we're using both but here's the, the thing let's call it gomez because gomez is what we call sasha now teabag is what we called him when he was a kid when he grew up and the movie was starting to happen we started calling him gomez and where that came from he goes hey man the movie's doing so fucking good, man. And we're, we're at all the film festivals, man. This is fucking great. I've got the best train set and all the kids on the street are coming to see it. And as soon as he said train set, went click. Gomez Adams. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gomez. <laughs> right on. Oh, man. You that's know, the eccentric millionaire. He's got a fucking great train set. Like, what a fuck. That's funny. So that's what we've been That's what we've been calling Sasha. Okay. So what, what, a be, what a better way of, of, of just giving the guy a hug. You use both, not just one of his nicknames, but both of them. You got to love it. So and, and they're connected because they're really the this, this same exact song. All that the only difference is that the, the, the second version, Gomez, we yelled Gomez at the beginning of the song and 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 we added horns. That's the only difference. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad you called out that distinction, Lips, because it's funny. Everybody, everybody who is watching right now, um, first of all, I know you're loving this podcast, so make sure you go out, like, and subscribe to the channel because we've got hundreds and hundreds of awesome, awesome interviews, including the one that we did with Lips before out there. But um, for everyone watching right now, not only do we do podcasts like this, but you can also go out to rocktitan.tv where we have all kinds of music news as well as reviews of albums. So Lips, you just completely forced me 
to go back to my review of Impact is Imminent, which is out May 20th, everybody. You just forced me to go back to that and reanalyze the entire thing. So everyone who's watching, you can know that this review that I have up on rocktitan.tv has been edited more than once. Oh, man. I, I, I got to thank you for that insight. But I, but, I, but I have to tell you, this album has a lot of depth that you normally that and then that it's typical uh anvil music is it's really easy to comprehend it and listen to it but it's another thing to actually construct it and play it i have to honestly tell you right on. when it really comes down to the, all the fucking aspects of it and what it takes to actually get it where it is it'd be you'd be absolutely people would be absolutely shocked it's not so fucking easy no matter how easy it sounds it might be it's not so fucking easy anyway the the the, the thing is uh, that's magical or the or placement of lyrics the, what the what the fucking thing is saying and then the way that the syllables all fall in the in in the groove and some of the com musical construction i did i did three three bar three bars of, of a, a, a like three sections to make a full verse when normally it would be four. You'd use 99.9% .9 of bands use se sections that are four in, in even numbers. Reason being first line, rhyme line, first line, rhyme line, right? You following what I'm saying? I am, do, I am. Well, I mean, the whole thing is, Lips, if it were that you've easy. You've only got three, three, verse, three verse sections. Right. What are you rhyming with on the third line? On the fourth, you have no fourth line. Well, if it was that easy oh, for everyone so to put a compilation, I, I, you have to, you have to, you have to learn how to construct lyrics so that works. Sure. Because because I know that 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 you you, you know I don't think people stop and think about those things, and you certainly don't by listening to it. I'm just pointing stuff out where complexities where the complexity comes in, in 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 the songwriting so i have to specifically construct my lyrics to fit some of this music that's what i'm doing that's what the songwriting is you know and i've, I've constructed the, 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 and known what i'm doing previous to actually applying it so i know what i'm looking for when i'm doing it like well, just I hearing, create, create, I'm putting the I'm putting the bed track down. The stuff I got to sing to. Sure. And it's a good damn thing that the singer is the same person that is doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That I, I, I that that we're each listening to each other and know what we're doing. And that that's taken me that's taken me a good part of my whole life to fucking actually get a complete hundred percent grasp on that. Right on. And that, that that's where what, what what the world is hearing. You're hearing me in in my in my personal humble opinion. And that's, you know, that could be subjective. You, everybody can look at the world a different way. But to me, I'm t all the knowledge and all the things that I learned for 45, 50 years, man, I'm using it. And now I know what I'm doing. For the first time, I actually can honestly say I know exactly what I'm doing. And that's rather than um, like the first three albums, no clue. It's all guesswork. You don't know what Amble, how was I supposed to know what Amble sounds like when I wrote Metal on Metal? Who's Anvil? What is Anvil? I'm doing it, and that's what becomes Anvil. But to me, it sounded like I was Ted Nugent. I sounded like I was Black Sabbath. I sounded like I was all my influences, because that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing, but not, but, but that's how I, what I'm hearing as as the creator, not the listener. The listener is hearing that's the anvil sound. Well, being and it has the mixtures of all those things. You're right, but you're not one or independent. Or you have your own thing. It's it's actually quite interesting because there's there's many different facets of anvil. You know, people are going, "Hey, man, there's you guys all sound the same. It all sounds the same. All your records are the same." Really? I didn't even I can't even find two songs that sound the same on the same fucking record. What are you saying? <laughs> and they're all different, all different keys, different, different feels, different tempos, you name it, different modes. 
every possible every possible difference I can put in so that you get a completely different flavor. That's what's going to be the next song. I'm not going to give you another rendition of the same shit 10 times. I'm not going to do that. Never have, never will. But I'm just explaining from the creators, from the creative perspective, what, what, what this all is. I mean, you can judge me for all you want, but that's, that's what it is to me. You know, music, music is all about melody to a rhythm. If you haven't got melody to a rhythm, you haven't got music. Sorry. That's how I look at it. Well, how can't I? I'm a guitar player singer. That's that's how it works. That's what music is. <laughs> as far as I as, as far as I can tell, at least from my from my perspective as a creator who was born in 1956 and had at least and had at least the background and the and the knowledge of everything that came in the renaissance of what is known as electric guitar. Right on, man. You know, basically the first fine V was 1958, right? So I was already two, I was only two years old. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll tell you what, Lips, just because of the way you articulated that and everything that goes into your music and the way you write and the way you play, I know that I, I, I speak for myself, but I, I think I can speak for everyone else when you've not only forced me to go back and listen to Impact is Imminent, just the way you, you know, the way you expressed yourself just now. Everyone, every single person in this audience, every single one of the Anvil fan base is going to have to go back and listen to this multiple times just to fully appreciate what it is that you just conveyed. Because I don't know that I've ever heard a single artist express their passion for writing the way you just did. And I, I got to say, hats off to you, man. Hats off to you. I mean, I love that. I love hearing how much work, you know, how much intellect and strategy really goes into what it is you're doing. You know, it's not just about oh, creating music. Fucking, and, you know, it's, fucking, it's, it's, it's not just smoking drugs and having a good time, man. Right you got to know what you're doing. Right on. You got to know at, at a certain point, you got to know what you're doing. Otherwise... Otherwise, you're just pro tool to fucking dog shit, right? You don't know what you're doing, and the, the producer does everything for you. You don't know what what to sing, how to sing. You don't know how to place the lyrics. You don't know you don't know how to how to organize a song. And they can do that in today's studios. They do that shit. They make songs from fucking scratch and make them up there. The band plays three bars. They fucking make up make a whole fucking verse out of it. Okay. They never, and the, 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 the song is never played by the band ever. Right on. And so, then they have, and then they go through hell trying to learn it. Right on. Well, I tell you what, I think you just really answered one topic, really, that I wanted to bring up with you. But I'm going to bring it up anyway because I think it's so important, especially now. I'm so I'm so glad you just explained everything that goes into the evolution not just of Anvil, but of you, Lips, as a musician, you know, as a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, everything is a growing, a growing, a growing experience because I, along with, with, with what I'm saying, there's a, there's a level of confidence that you have to gain from, from the knowledge and the experience. And it, it, you don't get that instantly either. Right, right. So this and is where I was like, going. There's self, there's self belief. And then there's, and then there's, I need to lean on my buddies. You know right on, I mean? man. Right on lips. Well, this is where I was going. So I was going to ask you because we talked a lot about the documentary, you know, Anvil and the story of Anvil last time we had a chance to catch up. And you were talking about a, a little bit ago when you were mentioning Gomez, you know, just the success that that documentary had, which man, Rotten Tomatoes has it at 98% and they don't just dole out high ratings. I mean, it is like, I've, I've seen some things that I thought were amazing and it just gets butchered you know as far as like uh the critics go but your documentary did phenomenal now i saw a little while back that you were talking about maybe doing a follow-up to it but that you never really thought it would see the light of day you know that it basically just kind of quashed the idea of doing a follow-up to that and i'm thinking to myself what in the world could they have possibly not covered in that documentary, like where would they even possibly go from here? Because they covered their entire careers. But now based on everything that you just told me, you have an absolute perfect sequel to that documentary because it is, you know, just yeah, but a, sequel, a maturity, but a you know? Yeah but, yeah, but hold on a second. 
in my opinion, and probably what will end up, there will be another documentary, but I won't be around to see it. Oh, don't even say that, dude. Oh, Do no, not. It's not a matter, no, it's not a matter of me saying it. It's a matter of reality. Oh, come on, man. You want to see the epilogue? Man, hey, we don't want this to be a posthumous freaking hey, documentary, keep man. This tape, keep this tape. It will be fucking used later. Watch. <sighs> Dude, don't I, I'm gonna pretend Lips, it. that you I didn't even it. hear I'm 66. that. Sixty-six. What do you mean? Don't say. Oh, you're young, man. What are you talking about? Oh, everything, everything, every person goes. Everyone. Well, no one is immune. <laughs> well, I I beg to differ, go sir. Go, 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 go get your go get your uh, your vaccination. You can't get a vaccination <laughs> against death. Keith Richards is immune, man. Die, Come no on, dude. Want to or not. Keith Richards is immune. Would you not agree? <laughs> you know, people thought people thought Motorhead would be fucking, you know, playing to to the to the dust that's left after the atomic uh, atomic war. You know, All right, it's yeah. like, come on, man. You know, something. No, we're not built to last forever. No. And, we, and and the other thing is, is like the like what age has done to me is appreciate everything while it's here and right. boy the pandemic if anything should have of awakened that up in humanity god only knows and this whole thing that's going on in the ukraine is beyond comprehension in my if, if from my in my world i just cannot believe that this is that, that this is going on it's horrifying and i think that, i think that it's there's a part of it that's really some parts of it that are really disturbing. Yeah. Wow. Well, really, all parts of it is disturbing. I, I mean, man. all parts of it are really disturbing, but uh. but but where it has where roots of 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 the past are being are being um, twisted. The the actual the actual truth truth of what what things were and the, the, like from the Second World War that put the world in where 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 we are today right that, that, that russia's misinformed about what who the nazis were like you've got their secretary of state or whatever saying that that yeah. hitler was, was a jew it's like right what, what, what and even if there was any kind of of connection in one way or one way or the other i don't know the how relevant that is and to to point fingers about those kind of things, it's just like, shut up. Yeah, it's mind boggling. Fuck up. It's, it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Yeah. One one thing. I mean, I, all right. So you're going to do another documentary, and I can I can definitely see just how awesome that follow up would be now, because now after having listened to just how much you put into your music, not that I ever doubted it before, but just the way you articulated it. Now I see where you're 19 albums deep now, you know, with impact is imminent, everybody May 20th. All right. I get it. I definitely get it. And that would be awesome. Now, one of the things I think was interesting is, you know, I hadn't seen that many documentaries with a band really cataloging their life story, if you will. And then not too long ago, I spoke with an artist. You may or may not be familiar with him. It was named Ed Aborn uh, from the band Siren. And it was one of these bands where, you know, they kind of had their heyday. All right. Not, I don't, not, not that you can relate to this, but uh, right when they were on the cusp of like really breaking out everything just seemingly fell apart. They just fell apart. And, uh, you know, that was, that was kind of it. And then they just became a thing of myth and legend. And, uh, someone had, you know, gotten a hold of their music over in Europe, you know, go figure it's Europe, you know, where rock well, and roll and heavy that's metal that's is just, it's well, like the eighties over there. No, where music culture is. Right. I mean, where music culture okay. is. Okay, fair enough. That's, a, that's, a, that's really ultimately where, where music originated, right? Right, right Rock, on. Right Rock on. and Beethoven, they came from over there, right? Yeah, yeah right. So, <laughs> I'm so, just saying, yeah. generally, generally speaking, you know, what, what can I say, man? But so does, so does all, all of humanity. So does our society. We all come from over there some way sure, or another, sure, right? Sure, sure. So all ultimately, much. Where, where is it going to do the best? Where have things originate, where there's right. class and where there's class and uh, and culture. Well, where North America, Matt, Matt, North America is not a really 
cultured place. It's it's because it's so we're new. We're young, yeah. Exactly. We're way too new. We're only been around a, a, a couple hundred years, not thousands yeah. of years. Exactly. Show me a fucking show me a, a building that was built built in fucking fifteen hundreds here. Right, right. You can't. <laughs> right, right, right. But what I wanted to ask you, know, or, or even earlier, when I when I mean before before Columbus uh, before Columbus sure discovered America, that the, there was no fucking there was no white man here, right? Right, right. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. But what I wanted to ask you was because I, I, I believe that you as a band, obviously, you know, you've influenced so many musicians over the years. Well, I don't, you were at the I don't, front of I, do oh, I come know, on, man. Do I know? <laughs> they were, they I, were know, in your- I know, <laughs> I know, I know what Lemmy said to me. <laughs> That's what I know. A lot and, of them and, were in your and, and, and interesting. In 1983, I'm on tour with Lemmy in a in a fucking in a in a hotel and getting drunk in the middle of the fucking night, doing fucking speed and drinking drinking doing his speed because he insisted if we're going to do any time together, I got to do this, and and drinking his vodka and orange. Okay, so in this conversation, we just he's going, Lemmy, you don't know what it means for me to be sitting here. You're a god. You're fucking, you invent, you help me invent, you've invented speed to put speed metal in. And I fucking, fucking totally turned me on to this shit, man. I'm, you are Mr. Metal. I, I love what you do, man. And, and he's going, you know what lives in 10 fucking years, there'll be another bloke sitting across the table and he'll say the same bloody thing to you. <laughs> That was a pretty good impression, man. That was scary. Yeah, you knew the man. You definitely knew the man. Oh my gosh! Yeah, but even to, I mean, when you think about, I mean, what a, what what logic? Yeah, sure. And, he's, he, and 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 that's when you say that to me. That's what that immediately immediately triggers. Right on. It's like you don't think of yourself as being the guy. Okay. Everybody else brings it to you. You they, you don't bring it to them. You know what I mean? I do. Well, and, and I can't what, relate, but I hear he you. Says, I'm a, he says, you're telling me, but I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be somebody telling you. Right. Right. So with all the trials and tribulations that you as a musician have been through, as well as Anvil, as it just pertains to the music business at large, has there been anyone, and, and this is where I was kind of going with the whole documentary, because I know you've inspired other people. That's that's without question. You've definitely inspired others, as you were inspired by Lemmy. But okay, has anyone dude, ever come to you we saying... three minutes left, eh? Yeah, all right, right on, man. Right on. See? I knew it. I knew it. We were going to have enough time, everybody. Impact. Well, we, I, I think I blew somebody up. So it's all good. About. Impact is imminent. Impact is imminent. It's coming out May 20th. But the, is is there anyone of note lips that's ever come to you and said, you basically saved us as a band. You saved our career because I was going to call it quits. I was literally ready to give up on the whole thing. Oh, We've been dude, trying at this man. for so long. But after listening to you, after seeing well, your documentary. More, much, much, much more profoundly. Yeah. Much, much more profoundly. Yeah. People who are terminally ill. Oh man, right on. You couldn't imagine that, could no. you? No. I mean that, that 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 that's what that movie did. Okay. So these are these are some of the other other aspects of that people don't even fucking that they're not even gonna know about it. But the other aspects are, you know, people with cancer uh coming to our shows. Jeez. All right. Well, I know you gotta get going, and, man. And, 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 and coming up and hugging me and saying saying yeah. that that I'm giving them hope. Yeah, and, right on. And it's it's pretty fucking. I mean, I can't tell you. There's been quite a few that have passed away within weeks. Oh, weeks man. You know, and I, and and I, I find out about it. It's it's heartbreaking, man. Yeah. Now, well, it's heartbreaking. Just fucking heartbreaking. But yeah. Regardless, th- these are the things that 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 came with that. Yeah. Yep. I'm no, to fight, to fight the good fight, to to go after your own survival, to 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 take part in your own in your own future, right and on. that is that, and to believe in yourself. Right on, right on. You know, the, 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 the take a lesson. Go watch the video, read the lyrics, <laughs> see the movie, and there you go. <laughs> learn the anvil. Learn the anvil. 
you know, the anvil th mottos. And well, we didn't have enough time here, Lips. <laughs> we didn't have enough time. We definitely have to have a part two because I haven't even begun scratching the surface with you, man. But I appreciate all your time. I know you got to get rolling, making your media rounds to discuss all things. Impact is imminent, everybody. May 20th. And uh, we are here with not just the musician, not just the singer-songwriter, but the philosopher, who is Lips Kudla. Thank you so much, man. Thank okay, you. man. Bye-bye. Yeah. You have I a love hanging day. out with you, dude. And uh, yeah, yeah we'll, catch up. we'll catch up later on. I'm going to catch you in Millersville. And everybody, make sure you go check out the website, check out all the links that we have here, and catch these guys on tour live. Absolutely awesome. And I'm Scotty J. You're watching Rock Titan. We're out. Bye-bye.